Hey there guys, welcome to my blind playthrough of Silent Hill 2 Remake. It's a bit unfortunate that I wasn't able to play this game early. I mean, I did purchase the digital deluxe edition, so I could have played this game uh, 48 hours earlier. But uh, things came up that delayed me from actually getting started on this game. And I'm kind of looking forward to this game. I mean, I've seen the gameplay. Um, I'm familiar with Silent Hill 2 a bit, thanks to watching Christian Engine SDA's uh, gameplay. I'm familiar with, you know, like the whole idea of Silent Hill and its supernatural elements, which I'm not really a fan of. I've never liked... I mean, I used to not really think so much about the idea of supernatural versus, like, science fiction but after so long reading up on stories just being immersed in lore and you know playing games like the evil within and resident evil i really don't like supernatural elements in media anymore i mean there are certain exceptions like with ghostwire tokyo but i'll talk more about that when we get into the blind playthrough but I guess to start off this initial introduction to uh, Silent Hill 2 Remake, like I said, I'm kind of looking forward to this. I understand Silent Hill 2's concept, I understand the Silent Hill series a bit, thanks to watching Carcinogen SDA's gameplay. So, um, I'm familiar with the story, I know about the cult in Silent Hill 1, Silent Hill 3, and other Silent Hill games. I know there's no cult involved in Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 2 is pretty isolated, and I have a lot of things to really say about the Silent Hill series, because the Silent Hill series is very overrated. I really don't understand understand why people praise it. I mean, I understand Silent Hill 2 was regarded by many as being one of the best games ever made because of its use of video games as a media for uh, conveying very poetic storytelling, but I feel like that concept is done a lot better in other games, but I'll, I'll explain when I get the chance. But uh, from what I've seen with the gameplay, this actually feels like a remake. I mean, I think they've kept the dialogue from the original Silent Hill 2 preserved, so I don't know if there's going to be much to extract from the story. I don't know if they're going to really change anything around. They might change up things with the environment, although, you know, I did see that one area with the pool and the pistol with that baby carriage. That area seemed to be preserved, and there were three of those um, cancer-inducing manifestations. I don't know what they're called. I'm not familiar with the enemy names. I know the psychological symbolism involved with them. I'll, I'll talk more about that when I get the chance. I think you'll just want me to get into this right now. So I've already adjusted my settings. I've asked uh, one of my subscribers if there are any higher difficulties with this particular uh, title above hard difficulty, and he mentioned there isn't. So I think hard difficulty is going to be the highest difficulty, and then the puzzle difficulty will have hard difficulty as the highest. But I'm just going to set that to easy because I don't understand the point of puzzle in survival horror games very rarely are they ever worthwhile i'll talk more about that when i get the chance but without further ado uh let's get into this uh combat challenge hard puzzle challenge light because i don't want to waste time like who wants to put puzzles in a survival horror game where you're delaying the player from actually getting to the threat that's what never makes sense. So when I first saw the the gameplay of Silent Hill 2 Remake, the graphics looked pretty impressive. So I know we're gonna be in this uh, bathroom area outside of Silent Hill. You know, James is lamenting the loss of, um, is it Maria or Marie? I forget. I know there are two versions of the character. I'm not entirely sure what that psychological symbolism is. Like, I know he made Pyramid Head, for instance, to punish himself, because that is a, a thing people tend to do. I mean, there's a lot to talk about with psychology, because I'm a massive uh, fan of psychological concepts, because I studied psychology. It's just the supernatural aspects kind of dilute the um, intrigue of the psychological aspect, I would say. You know, compared to Evil Within, for instance, but that's something I'll talk about later. Okay, good thing there's no cheesy jazz music playing. I've always hated that about the Silent Hill series with the jazz music. Yeah, I remember he received a letter, apparently. I don't know if that's something he actually got, or if Silent Hill generated that. I mean, I, I don't really understand how um, the supernatural abilities of Silent Hill actually work, and I feel like with supernatural concepts, there's always a lot of confusion with the way the abilities work. Yeah, so I have it set to performance mode. I saw in some of the uh, comparison videos for this game that there were... Uh, massive frame rate issues like this game does run at a 60 but um in that area where those three cancer manifestations were in that pool with the baby carriage the frame rate dropped to like 30 for some weird reason so i saw in the gameplay that you can break car windows and you can uh, actually get stuff from them so it's like evil than two i'm not too sure if some of the original interactions with the environment are preserved from the original silent hill 2 all right i think you can get a map Oh, Silent Hill from here? Yeah. I see they preserve that long stretch of land all the way to the graveyard. You don't do much gameplay in Silent Hill, honestly. You spend more time running, even when there are no enemies around. 
I mean, like the, the gameplay designs of the original Silent Hill games are nothing compared to the original Resident Evil games. I'm not really sure when I should discuss this right now. We'll have to see. You can't search anything right now. So I know in the Silent Hill series there are like four endings. There's like a good, a good plus ending, a bad, a bad plus ending, and there are a couple of joke endings as well. I know there's a, a dog ending and an alien ending in this particular game. I don't really care about that. It's not that important to go for certain endings. I don't understand the whole point of this massive jog. Why, why did they do this? You know, this could have all been like one cutscene, honestly. Or they, it could have taken place somewhere else. Like, why do we have to do this? Is it literally just to build tension? That'd be very weird because we don't have a weapon. Ah, uh, save point. Okay. It's like someone's groping around my skull. Who talks like that? Someone's groping around my skull? I've never heard anyone say that kind of phrase before. That is so weird. That's a very bizarre line already. Nobody talks like that. And that's all he has to say. He's not going to talk further about whatever the hell this is. <laughs> that really makes no sense. See, the thing I don't really understand about Silent Hill is that in a lot of the cutscenes, the characters act like they weren't just dealing with a bunch of enemies. It almost makes it seem like they're in a dream world. And you know like how um, when you're in a dream or like when you're in a deep dream, uh, you get those moments where you notice inconsistencies in your dream, like for instance an incorrect home address or the fact that your house looks different, but you don't have the ability to leave the dream. Or like when you do realize this inconsistency, you feel more compelled to continue the dream rather than leave it and you know i even looked this up and it's related to diminished activity in your prefrontal cortex like i did discuss this briefly in, in my alan wake blind playthrough because it really felt like alan was in a dream with the way he was responding to certain events but of course with certain flashbacks like showing the uh, the dark presence taking control of that girl and alan was nowhere near there you could tell it was just a supernatural presence and honestly that took away from uh, the game like, supernatural elements. It's, it's hard to explain, like, if you watch, like, Ben 10 Omniverse, for instance, and that one episode involving Bazel, and the way he says, like, he hates, like, real magic, he prefers, like, street magic, because there are rules there, and, you know, like, there's something very impressive about working within the confines of rules, rather than just, like, doing everything like that. That's one of the main reasons why science fiction, you know, like sci-fi uh, horror, like Alien Isolation, or like or like the Alien series, or like with Resident Evil, or with like Evil Within. Like, Evil Within's concept, like, it's it's similar to um, Silent Hill. Like, they even have the whole symbolism with the enemies, where they represent certain aspects of Rubik's life. But the way they use a machine, and how they tie that into uh, the unconscious and the conscious mindscapes of individuals, rather than some cheap supernatural element that just feels like a get-out-of-jail-free card, that right there is very impressive. Like, it's such an original concept to that whole idea. And it looks like this uh, run down the hillside is shorter in this remake version. And you meet this girl here, so I believe in the lore she was uh, sexually molested by certain uh, family members. And I think she's developed dissociative identity disorder, and she often thinks about killing herself with a knife. And I know when you inspect this knife as James, uh, this unlocks the bad ending. Because, like, uh, when you look at the knife, I mean, th this is something that happens in individuals, but it's almost like when uh, you look at certain objects, contradictory thoughts play out in your head. I don't know if that's an inherent thing with individuals or if it's the result of social contagion with what people learn or, like, when, what they hear of certain individuals and they're like, no way am I going to act like that. But in the process, you end up thinking like that. It's interesting because I know I oftentimes have those kind of contradictory thoughts when I stare at certain objects. I don't know if that's me actually doing it or, or I'm just like... Oh, I'll do it just to tempt fate, like the character does. Like, I don't know if that's me actually intentionally doing that, or if it's um, just an unconscious process that's inherent to all humans. But I imagine uh, because of James's recent trauma, he's more emotionally raw and more emotionally vulnerable, which is why what's normally uh, a very confined process is a bit stronger when he's looking at this person's knife. Of course, I don't understand why he doesn't just get that in general with his other weapons. Like, why specifically this person's knife? Is it because she has suicide? thoughts so like in a sense the knife represents a retrieval cue that brings james back to the memories he had of this woman trying to commit suicide and so he ends up inadvertently thinking about doing it to himself is it like that 
that's what I assume is the case. I, I don't know if like one of the developers noticed this kind of uh, basic subconscious or psychological process and they decided to incorporate it into Silent Hill 2 specifically to represent that trauma. Like I'm not entirely sure if these developers actually did research on psychology before they actually uh, made this game. Like I know with the Resident Evil developers, they studied a lot on um, Anthrax and also with the Geneva Convention. One of the most interesting things is how like detailed the landscape of the world is in Resident Evil. Like it almost feels like our world with how detailed it is. Like with the the thermobaric bomb that was dropped onto Raccoon City, they, it's specifically a thermobaric bomb, not a nuke, because of the fact that if a nuke were used, it would not only lead to radioactive fallout, which would likely enhance the virus, but uh, it would spread to other states it would violate the Geneva Convention. Like Capcom actually took that into account when designing the uh, the supplemental lore to Resident Evil 3 OG, which was interesting. And you also hear a lot of stuff like that with like the political stuff or like with the court stuff. Like for instance, there's a piece of lore that was uh, released alongside Resident Evil 7 where, was it that lore or was it something else? I don't remember. But uh, Wesker had submitted a chapter 11 bankruptcy statement after umbrella fell to reorganize the company's assets and therefore take control of them because um this is something i talk about in the retrospective but the umbrella that uh krauser was talking about in uh, resident evil 4 og the one that wesker was trying to revive that's actually blue umbrella from resident evil 7 so blue umbrella didn't just appear out of nowhere in resident evil 7 they were actually mentioned in resident evil 4 og and that is such a cool idea and they also released a lot of uh, supplemental lore with like the arms magazine and aw01 archives i believe they were called they had other files like that related to resident evil 7 it was uh very very interesting like the amount of lore i've learned from the resident evil podcast team because they compiled all this lore i mean you just cannot get a more detailed universe than resident evils i mean resident evils universe has been around since 1996 and they constantly add like supplemental material they constantly uh ground the world that Resident Evil takes place in as if it's our world and it makes it even more interesting and that's something that supernatural games like Silent Hill could never really like accomplish because the supernatural element really takes me out of it and it doesn't ground me in this world that we're in. That's the skill involved with working within rules rather than actually you know like being liberal with creativity because then it leads to a lot of confusion a lot of the ideas don't feel very refined stuff like that there's just a lot of errors associated with um no rules rather than having rules. And it's more impressive when they create a magnificent product out of it, when they have rules rather than no rules. But yeah, a, a lot to really talk about with comparing this game series to Resident Evil, not just on the gameplay side, but also with like the story side and the trauma side with the characters and uh, other aspects like that. I've only played the first Sound Hill. I didn't finish it because it was honestly a, a draining experience. Like, I think I played the first couple of minutes of the first Silent Hill 1, and I just saw how bad the animations looked, and the lack of stun animations. Like, literally, uh, when the dog would attack me, like, I, I was experimenting with countering uh, a dog's uh, jump attack. You know, because, like, in Resident Evil, you hit the dog out of the air, and it falls to the ground. I mean, aside from Resident Evil 1 Remo, because, you know, that... That title is just really like stupid with its mechanics. And the dogs are one of the most broken enemies in Resident Evil 1 Remilk. And they're honestly the worst dog enemy ever introduced in the entire Resident Evil series. But um, in the Resident Evil titles, you would hit a dog out of the air and it would fall to the ground. They don't even do that in Silent Hill 1. You hit a dog in the air, it literally pauses in the middle of its jump. Like it just freezes in the air and it just drops to the ground before starting to attack you again after it just runs away from you. It was really stupid. And I know based on uh, Carcinogen SDA's walkthrough, he mentioned other broken enemies in uh, Silent Hill 1. Hello? Anyone in here? There are the keys. Seems kind of odd that they would just do that. Just seems a bit weird that they would just have that door there, but then the keys just right there. Not really sure what the point of it is, but this is where you fought your first enemy, but I believe it's different now. Like, there'd be this uh, barricade that you just vault over, and then this enemy is here, and then James just takes the wooden plank, and then beats it to death. And the combat in Silent Hill 2 OG was awful. It looked really bad. Lots of hit detection issues, lots of clunky moments with the animations. It just looked really silly. It looked so arcadey. So I can definitely tell why the team had to redesign the combat system entirely. Yep, I remember this uh, stretch of road right here. 
This was in the uh, original Silent Hill 2. He spends so much of this introduction running, and I really don't understand why. I guess it's just literally for setting up ambiance. I mean, it, this could have been so much better. Like, Resident Evil 7 and Village can get away with this. Like, at least with Resident Evil 7, you could just make a save and just get straight to uh, Mia's boss fight. With Resident Evil Village, I didn't mind having to go through that introduction every time. It never bothered me. It always felt very quick to me. But this just feels like it's dragging on a bit too long. Like, what, what's the whole point of setting all this up if I can't even go inside any of the buildings, you know? Like, why go through that lengthy jog when I can't go inside any of the buildings? That's just what I don't understand. There's, like, nothing you're doing here. It's just literally for setting up ambiance, but it's not done in a way that's interesting. So if this is Silent Hill, why aren't some of the locations from Silent Hill 1 here? Like, you go to that school, for instance, and you deal with those demon children. But I don't know if that school is here in this game. There's something back here. Maybe I should check it out. Not that there's going to be anything, because I don't have a weapon. And since I don't have a weapon, it means there's no ammunition set up already. What is this? Is that the bile from that cancer manifestation? It would be nice if the developers actually put in some kind of um, bio system for the enemies and the, uh, the menu. I mean, everybody already knows the enemies. I mean, the enemies are all the same from uh, Silent Hill 2 with some slight redesigns. I know, like, the enemy that clings to the ceiling and he grabs you with, like, the feet. He's been completely re redesigned. It's just one. And the mechanics are completely different. I saw the gameplay for it. So it doesn't look as stupid. Like, I don't know why people regard that enemy type as being scary. I mean, I saw, like, the comparison video, and, like, this guy was with one of the developers of Silent Hill 2 Remake, and he found that enemy scary. I, I don't know why. I don't know why that developer found that enemy scary. It makes no sense. People are weird like that. I mean, you can't exactly see anything inside the cage. He doesn't do any sort of, like, dangerous animation aside from grabbing you. It's very odd. And that's another thing. I mean, I know, like, the way the enemies attack you... There's also meant to be... Oh. I was going the right way. So what is this enemy called? I know this is the one that spews that bile at you. And it's, I think it's meant to be a representation of... Um, Mary's disease like, spouting out towards... Uh, James. Something like that. Hey. Wait. Really? That didn't strike you as odd. I know like in Silent Hill 3, uh, certain bosses were meant to represent whatever that girl's name was. I, I, I don't remember her name, I really don't care. But I know she was meant to give birth to some deity that the cult worshipped. And like certain enemies like the uh, that worm you fought as a boss, it's meant to represent a female vagina of some sort. But I remember the director of Silent Hill 3 mentioning that certain enemies were just designed to be enemies and not meant to have any, like, psychological symbolism to them. Uh, it really doesn't matter to me because, again, the supernatural aspect really dilutes the supposed impressiveness of the enemies. Yeah, so this is where the first enemy is. Oh, and you get a save point here. That's nice. There's a radio here. Also, I do remember that in the Silent Hill series, uh, the radio is used to find enemies, like whenever enemies are nearby. Uh, the light matters because apparently the enemies react to your light. You also have to move slowly so that the enemies don't get aggroed on you too quickly. That did not look very good. The, the destruction of the environment like that, that just looked too, like, PS3 era to me. And like the way that enemy interacted with the boards, the way they just fell over it, it didn't feel right. Like there are certain animations that I noticed in the original gameplay of Silent Hill 2 Remake that didn't feel next gen. It didn't feel like it was taking advantage of the capabilities of the PS5 and other next gen consoles. It really felt PS2 or PS3-esque with the way the uh, environmental destruction worked. It just looked pretty basic. Stay back. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! Nice. Saw that coming. Whoa! Oh! Nice! Gotta finish it off. Yeah, the combat's definitely improved. Definitely feels a, a bit more... 
realistic with its designs compared to the clunkiness and goofiness that was Silent Hill 2's combat. You know, this is really how, like, a normal person would fight. If because you Have you actually seen, like, news videos? Have you actually seen the way people react to criminals? You've seen how, like, evasive and how much they like to run or actually, like, avoid certain attacks whenever people are coming after them? You ever watch those news videos? That's literally how it was. And, like, I already saw, like, the original gameplay regarding uh, this enemy. I saw the way the combat works, so I knew certain counter animations that this enemy had. Of course, I hope the hitboxes aren't bad. God, I remember when the combat trailer released for Silent Hill 2 Remake, people hated it for some stupid reason, even though the combat trailer really showcased the developers trying to, you know, put in a bit more effort with the enemies and with the animations, with the actual hit registration. I mean, I know there's probably going to be problems with the hit registration for sure, because this is not Capcom we're talking about, this is Bloober Team. And they're using the framework of, what are they called, Team Sound Hill, whatever. They were using the framework of the original team's designs, and I imagine there's going to be problems like that. There's going to be like artificial designs, like very artificial handicaps put upon yourself in order to make the enemies more lethal, it seems. Like, to give the illusion the enemies are lethal. And there might be some clunky moments, because, you know, people seem to think that clunky gameplay defines survival horror. I really don't understand why they think that. Like, why would you think that fighting the game is somehow scarier than fighting the enemies? That's something I've never understood with that kind of idiotic statement. And, you know, it's something I said as well with Resident Evil 1 Remake. Okay, what is the point of giving them a background in a police unit like STARS if they're not even going to fight like police officers? I mean, they literally stand still and shoot. The way they knife is very, very sluggish and very, very uh, weird. You have to rely upon phantom range on your knife when knifing down in order to actually hit the enemies because that's at least the only way to hit them at a distance. Like, even where there's more capable at fighting B.O.W.s than the original Resident Evil characters were their first and second times fighting B.O.W.s. I noticed this kind of thing when I first played Resident Evil 7. I don't remember what kind of gameplay I watched prior to 2015, but I know in the interim from 2012 to 2015, I don't think I was uh, exposed to Resident Evil through gameplay. I was, ex I was exposed to it mainly through YouTube videos. Something can be hooked onto the series, and I don't know what it was. That's something I want to talk about as well, because I've been obsessing over my origins as a gamer a lot, and also my, uh, like my own development as well into an individual. I've constantly been obsessing over that. Because of things that have happened in my life. That is something we're talking about, especially since this guy is practically obsessing over the past with the fact that he got that letter from Mary. You see, I, I can't tell if James's subconscious generated that radio response. And, like, it's it's unclear, like, it, it's staticky because that's just how the mind is. I mean, you, you've ever heard of the fog of war? I mean, like, normally uh, in dreams, you only notice, like, the uh, immediate surroundings around you, not so much, like, the surroundings past that point because it's kind of blurry and foggy as well. I mean, that that's just how the mind works. So maybe instead of a fog of war, they just had, like, the static and, you know, like, that's probably Mary talking. I, I could be wrong, though. Like I said, I'm not that familiar with Silent Hill 2's uh, events. I know there's, like, a second version of Mary. I think her name is, like, Maria? Or is it Maria? I, I don't remember. But you fight either Mary or Maria as a final boss. Or, or at least some kind of um, distorted version of them. I think that was meant to be a representation of James trying to punish himself alongside the Pyramid Head. I'm not sure. That never happened in the original. I know the save point was here early. Oh, no, 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 this actually did happen. I remember. I remember Kasunjin SDA's video, and I believe this enemy did come out like it just did. And weren't these things supposed to be on a wall? Why are they on... Oh, no, no, some of them were on the uh, table, I remember. And it's moving as well. Is that literally supposed to be the fog of Silent Hill, or is that supposed to be the... The fog of the mind? I'm not really sure. Feels like someone was groping around in my mind. Who talks like that? Seriously? Oh, shit! It's one of those, uh, cockroach things. Ow! Piece of shit. I think those only appear on hard difficulty. Like in the original Silent Hill 2. Let's practice some combat, shall we? Saw that coming. Ooh, nice work, dude. Oh, the visual effects look horrible. What's wrong with his body? 
Oh, really? That hit me? What is he doing? Is this an AI bug? What the hell? What the hell was he doing? Whoa! That was very sudden. There's no telling when these enemies will attack, because he was about to counter-attack me just then. I mean, there might be some pattern. I'd have to look back at the footage to verify um, when they actually do that counter-attack. Just then. Are you serious? If I hit this guy from behind, it will not let me combo. That is so dumb. Yeah, so I do have to exert a bit of caution with that enemy because there's no telling when it'll counter attack. Oh shit! Oh, he's coming back. 